guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. We got a lot to discuss. Let's start off with Nicki Minaj. Now, Nicki Minaj and Lil Uzi's Everybody has now sold over a million units in the U.S. Congratulations to Nicki Minaj. Now, I know Nicki Minaj doesn't need music videos, but that single should have had a music video. That was a bop. Still is. But when everybody first came out, when Pink Friday 2 dropped, that was a fan favorite. So, you know, we should have gotten a music video for that. Nicki Minaj also brought out Jeremiah and G Herbo at Gag City, Chicago. Nicki performed Chirac with G Herbo and one of my favorite songs, Want Some More uh, with Jeremiah, which is one of my favorite songs on the Pink Print album. Definitely top five. And um, I think it's so strategic how Nicki Minaj is bringing out different people each show based on where the artist is from. I think that's a very strategic um, move, okay? Um, you know, everybody that is effing with Nicki Minaj came out in support and um, performed with her except Champagne Thickums because he's a secret hater. Even though he was in Toronto, he didn't go on stage. Because he's a secret hater and I think he's a little bit jealous of Nicki Minaj because it didn't make no sense to go to the show and not perform. But that's neither here or there. I feel like everybody else has been very supportive of Nicki Minaj's tour. Um, with that being said, though, Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday 2 world tour is now projected to become the second highest selling rap tour in history. Followed by Champagne Thickums is all a blur tour. With 29 consecutive sold out shows is already the number one highest selling female rap tour of all time. Meanwhile, Botch and Bitter is still struggling to sell out the EBT experience, uh, which she is headlining. Um, I believe it's June 28th. Okay. With a bunch of other stars. Um, but Section 8 Gang are saying on social media that the tour will be officially sold out by June 28th, okay? Um, you know, I know they don't have their funds right now, but allegedly they are planning to get it sold out. If I was Titanic Records, though, I would just buy all of the tickets and give them out. That's a strategic move. I mean, I don't know why Titanic Records won't just buy the tickets for Botch and Bitter so she don't be embarrassed. Because if they don't sell out, she ain't going to be able to do a world tour. And that's going to even be more my bag. To Doja Badu, Doja Cat remains the only female rapper to go number one overall on the Paola Board Artist 100 this decade. Doja Cat rose to number one in 2022. Um, she became the top musical act in the U.S. for the first time thanks to five charting singles on the latest How 100 chart um, from her 2021 album Planet Her. From her hits, Women Need to Know, um, You Right, featuring The Weeknd, Freaky Deaky, featuring Tyga, um, and Get It To A Ya. Um, this week, Doja Cat reigns supreme as the number one female rapper on the chart and 27 overall. So congratulations to Doja Badu. And yes, you know, she does get payola. Okay, we know that for a fact. And she do low when it comes to the her sales, but at least she getting payola. You know, the payola is saving her. And honestly, I think a lot of artists probably wish they were getting the payola package like Doja Cat, you know? Um, and you know, that doesn't take away from her talent. She's still talented. Okay. Even though, you know, her numbers are not always up to par. Um, she's still talented. And in my eyes, I still feel like she can be the princess of rap. If we're talking about talent, you know, I think she's the top contender to be the Princess of Rap um, based on her artistry, okay, and how diverse she is. She's a diverse artist, and you can't take that away from her. Uh-oh, it looks like Section 8 Gang are calling out JT for copying Botch and Bitter. So, um, recently, JT put out a sunglass line with an influencer named Diera. And um, she has a similar outfit to what Botch and Bitter and Lizzo wore for their collaboration called Rumors, okay? Then earlier this year, 
when Botch and Bitter put out that trash um, freestyle called Like Trash, she had tape on her titties when she went live. And then, you know, JT did a similar look for um, her new single, OK, which we will be reviewing. And then, um, you know, Botch and Bitter got a Richard Millie. I think that's a Richard Millie. And allegedly JT got one after Botch and Bitter, according to the fans. So with that being said, a lot of fans are believing that JT is trying to copy Botch and Bitter's style. Let me know how y'all feel about that. I feel like JT might have a little bit of a Cardi B or Doja Cat or maybe even a Dolce influence. But I also feel like Botch and Bitter be copying tip. She didn't start drawing on her eyebrows until Dolja Cat did it first. Okay, let's be very clear. I feel like Botch and Bitter gets a lot of credit, but she low-key be copying too. So I do feel like they be copying and watching each other. But I feel like, um, you know, Botch and Bitter, she got a better budget. So she's able to execute looks better than JT sometimes, in my opinion. Um, JT has a better overall face card. She do have an overall better face card than Botch and Bitter. But um, sometimes JT looks to be looking a little bit tacky. Like I wasn't really feeling the cover art for OK. In my opinion, I thought it was a little bit tacky. But that's just me. Now, speaking of JT and Botch and Bitter, JT put out the OK song, which is Fire. Um, I give that song like an 8.9. Feel like it needed a music video. Um, you know, because JT don't have a lot of hype or push, so she need a music video. But she clocks loose tooth, okay? Um, she says she ate crab legs. Now her whole tooth is missing. Cheap ass veneers. You stay talking ish. Put a marker to this bitch. She's so counterfeit. And a lot of fans are saying that she is talking about botch and bitter. And I do remember Botch and Bitter talking about how her tooth went missing just like her man does, you know, when he's out here smashing these holes. She can't hold on to anything. Her career is hanging by a piece of thread. But um, JT ate her up. I got to give JT her tens for the whole song. And I'm excited for the future of JT's career. Now, moving on to Scratch Off. Scratch Off liked a tweet that said, I think we're getting a summer album. Oh, I'm so ready. So Scratch Off is teasing that she will be putting out an album pretty soon because summer is what, in two months? So with that being said, let me know how y'all feel about that. My thing is, how can you put out an album if you don't got no heads? This is why people think Scratch Off got a big ego because she thinks that she like Nicki Minaj or Queen B um, or the Chart of Such Races where she could just put out an album with no single or no hot new single. Like, you barely chart. What you think the next album going to do? Her last album did 20,000 first week, you know, went plastic cups. I think that um her new album probably going to do at least 10,000. You know, I don't think it's going to do 20,000. You know, she did 20,000 and she had low energy on that album. She ain't got no hits on this album. So I don't think she going to do much. I think she's going to do five to 10,000 first week. Good luck. And I definitely don't think RCA the Colorist is recouping anything from Scratch Off. I think they probably in the red. No shade. Now, moving on to Queen B. Um, a rumor is going around that Jason Aldean turned down $20 million offer to do a duet on Cowboy Carter. Um, allegedly saying, no way I'm putting my name on that crap. Um, I think this is a rumor that stands that don't like queen b are making up because didn't they say that camel face spent 20 million dollars on i think payola for cowboy car yet all her songs are dropping down the charts okay so it's just a rumor because i remember y'all saying that she spent 20 million dollars on payola yet her music is dropping down the charts how does that make any sense y'all are slow if you believe this Plus, in 2015, Jason Aldean admitted that he would love to do a duet with Queen B. So this is even more of a reason why this is a lie. Now, Ice Spice was on the Fisher remix that officially came out with Cash Cobain and Bay Swag. And um, it's a different sound. 
from what Ice Spice usually does, but I like her verse. I'm not going to front. You know, it was a little bit on a toonie, but, you know, I respect her trying something new. And I felt like she fit the song very well. So I'm going to give Ice Spice her tens for the, you know, Fisher remix. I feel like, you know, she experimented. You know, her verse was good. It's catchy. Um, it didn't sound off. You know what I'm saying? She fit the song. So I think she deserves her tens for, you know, being on a Fisher remix. Um, the only thing with Ice Spice, I still feel like she needs a solo hit record. Okay. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the collaborations that she's been doing, but I don't feel like you think you the ish. Um, you're not even a fart was a hit record. Not for me, at least. Um, I feel like she's going to need a hit record and hopefully she has one with the Sean Paul sample that she's dropping, you know, May 10th. Hopefully that's a hit record for her because I definitely feel like she needs one. Now, moving on to Normani. She released her alleged um, lead single, 159 featuring Gunna um, with no music video, barely any promotion. Um, but I do like the song. I was listening to it on repeat and I feel like it gives me like a early 2000 vibe. Um, definitely a Brandy influence. Um, I'll be honest with you. The lyrics weren't that great. I don't think the lyrics were that great, but sonically and vocally, she sound very smooth on the record. And another thing is, um, to me, I did not like Gunna being the feature on this song, which is actually, you know, kind of shocking because I'm a huge Gunna fan. But I think, you know, Chris Brown, Usher, The Weeknd would have sound better. Um, Gunna sounds too auto tune -y. I'm not a huge fan of when people use too much auto-tune and it was just too much, in my opinion. You know, like, can you really sing if you got to use auto-tune all the damn time. I feel like she could have gotten Bryson Tiller or um, Crispy's The Colorist. Or maybe, you know, she could try to pay The Weeknd to do some vocals on the record. But it just seemed like, you know, it was too auto tune on his side, not Normani's side. And then also, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give Normani Donkey of the Day. Now, you may be wondering why is Normani getting Donkey of the Day, you know, the same time she's releasing music? Because there was no. Good promotion for the rollout for 159. Okay, she barely promoted it all week. And then on top of that, there's no music video, no interviews. She didn't go on Instagram Live. This whole must think she Queen B. I mean, she must think she Queen B level to not be doing all this promotion. This song better not flop. That's all I have to say. This song better not flop if you not going to do no promotion for the record. Okay, that's how I feel about it. Now, I see that she's getting playlisting and, and all that stuff, and that's great. You know, playlisting is great. Hopefully, she gets on radio, but she should be doing promotion. At the end of the day, this is your major comeback single, and it just comes off like you don't really care, like you're lazy. Now, I understand she announced that she's releasing an album June 14th, which I'm happy about, but I feel like you need a hot single, and I don't know if this single is hot enough for you to roll out an album. Okay, so hopefully she drop another single with a music video and actually do some promotion this time. Okay, because I didn't really fully understand that. And I don't know if, you know, RCA the colorist not really messing with Normani. Maybe she gonna have to start sleeping her way to the top like Dolja and Rihanna and J-Ho have done so you can get that big budget. Okay, because I remember last time you had to pay for your wild side music video. I remember that. Um, well, some of it because you didn't have the budget. You need to start sleeping your way to the top so you don't have to pay for stuff like that. No shade. I'm usually against that. I really am. But I just feel like Normani got to do something. Everybody else is doing. You got to jump on the bandwagon and start sleeping your way to the top so you can get that big budget. But I was thinking, like, where is the promotion for this? Like, you didn't even go on Instagram live. I'm like, goodness gracious. This whole thing, she queen B. Now, moving on to Party Next Door. OK, um, he dropped the Real Woman album. OK, his lead single is um, for certain. And I'll be honest with you, that song is fire. 
Okay. Um, he came back strong. Um, I can see him ghost riding for Champagne Thickums after Champagne Thickums finished going back and forth with Kung Fu Kenny. Um, he probably gonna have Party Next Door um ghost write him some hits because Champagne Thickums signed Party Next Door. If you don't know who Party Next Door is, then um you just been living under a rock. But anyway, Party Next Door is an artist. He signed to Champagne Thickums, had a buzz at one moment in time. Um, if you know the song Recognize, um, he wrote for Rihanna, um, Champagne Thickums, several different artists. And um, I believe that Champagne Thickums is responsible for the reason why he never fully blown up because he's jealous of Party Next Door and Party Next Door um, actually can write hits, R&B hits that Champagne Thickums probably can't write. Um, and so I'm just honest with you. His new album is fire. Tens. Okay. Um, he came back strong with that lead single for certain. And I can see why um, Champagne Thickums never fully pushed Party Next Door because he's jealous of his talent. No shade. Now, speaking of the king of surgery, um, Tupac's estate has hit Champagne Thickums with a seasoned assist for using his voice on the Taylor May freestyle. Um, and... Champagne Thickums has removed the Taylor May Freestyle off his Instagram. I don't think he put it on streaming platforms, but it's removed off his Instagram. Now, a Warner executive named Tom Whaley owns Tupac's estate um, and said um, Champagne Thickums basically used Tupac's fake voice because it was AI as blatant abuse of the legacy of one of the greatest hip-hop artists of all time. The estate would never have given its approval for this use, as they should. You know, if I was the CEO of Warner, I would have sued Champagne Thickums for $100 million, okay? Because you kept it up way too long, and it was corny, okay? Um, Like I said, like, dead people should not be used in rap use for diss records, no shade. It just don't make sense. You know, at the end of the day, you don't even know if Tupac would really be messing with you, Champagne Thickums. Let's be honest. I think Tupac would have respected Kung Fu Kenny way more than he would have ever respected Champagne Thickums. And I get it. He was being a troll, but it backfired. You couldn't find anybody else other than Snoop Dogg and Tupac that wanted to be on a disc record with you. You that lonely? I mean... Metro got Future, The Weeknd, Nav, J. Cole, um, you know, a bunch of A-listers to hop on an album to diss you. Yeah, you couldn't find nobody to do a song with you? That's embarrassing. Now, Donkey of the Day is also going to Pissy Face Carisha, okay? So, JT just released a song, and instead of Young Miami promoting the song... She tweets, I can't wait for y'all to hear my intro because stop effing playing with me. The F and a fan said, can we get a snippet? And she said, no, I want y'all to gag. Nothing you do musically makes anyone gag. The only time you and gag should be in the same sentence is when you down on your knees. Okay, no shade. Um, Pissy face Carisha is proven time and time again that she's jealous of JT. Like, why can't you let JT have her moment? She's doing well on iTunes. You know, people are excited for a city Cinderella. And here you go with your nasty, yellow, yuck mouth tongue. Talking about, oh, I can't wait till you guys hear the intro. Intro to what? The tape that you got with Diddy? Okay, stop it. I'm giving Toilet Seat Young Pissy Carisha Donkey of the Day for that. That was weird. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. And have a great day.